was the, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not see because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to this place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and say, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Zacchaeus is one of those Bible stories that for the most part we've given it to the children to play with. Probably because Zacchaeus was short. And theoretically, of course, children ought to understand about short people. But Zacchaeus' story is a whale of a lot more than just a children's song about a short man. First of all, if you read Luke, periodically Luke will go into great detail to tell you about somebody, and Zacchaeus is one of them. <clears throat> so when this story starts, it says, There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. And right there, Luke has his audience. Now, chief tax collectors, as it turns out, are different from your regular old garden variety tax collectors. Chief tax collectors got their job by buying it. A chief tax collector bought his position for Rome. He was responsible for collecting the tolls and tariffs and income tax and any other taxes that Rome could think of in order to take from people. And what a chief tax collector would go do is to go to the Roman authorities and say, all right, I will collect those taxes. And what Rome would then say is, okay, but you have to pay them first. So a chief tax collector had to pay all the taxes that he said he would be responsible for collecting up front. That meant that you had to have capital to start with. You couldn't be a poor person and go get this job. You had to buy this job. So now the chief tax collector has this job that he has paid for. He's already paid everybody's taxes, but now he's going to collect taxes. And in order to do that, then he hires a bunch of other people who are going to be tax collectors. And he sends them out there, and he checks on everything you do. People that take tolls for the road. There are people who collect tariffs if you're importing or exporting something. There are people on the I mean, every kind of tax you can imagine, road driving. And so these tax collectors would go out and collect your taxes. And already, they were not popular. And then they would bring the money to the chief tax collector, and he would then make his money back that he had paid Rome. Now, if you don't think that that system wasn't open to abuse, <laughs> guess again. Everybody abused that system. So that when the chief tax collector paid Rome, then the bill he had, he inflated it. So that when he hired his tax collectors, he would tell them more than was actually needed. And a tax collector would then think to himself, oh, another penny or nickel or dime or dollar or so is going to hurt anybody. And so the tax collector would then collect more, and then he'd pay the chief tax. So this was an abused system right on down the line. And that meant, like us today, that we were not all that fond of tax collectors. They weren't all that fond of tax collectors back in Jesus' day So that was the number one strike against poor old Zacchaeus. The number two strike is that if you are collecting taxes for Rome, that means you have to deal with Rome. And Rome was the oppressor. Rome had a military grip on the nation of Israel, and Israel did not like it. And so if you are a tax collector, that means you are cooperating 
with the people who have conquered your country than any tax collector, whether you're the chief tax collector or the regular old garden variety tax collector, that meant that you were cooperating with the bad guys. And that made you less popular too. Thank you very much. That's strike two. And then strike three is any tax collector worth his salt is going to go snoopy. You know, he's going to look around. He's going to uncover your wagon, make sure you're not smuggling something at the bottom of the pile there. And that means you have to touch a lot of stuff which is going to make you unclean. And that meant the tax collectors couldn't worship in the temple because they were unclean. That's three strikes. So one of Luke's earliest listeners to this story would have gone, this poor guy doesn't have anything going for him. And then Luke makes sure you understand. If we could read the original Greek, the original Greek emphasizes this. Because what it says was, and Zacchaeus was rich. Just in case you missed the possibility, Luke makes sure you know Zacchaeus was rich. Now, under normal circumstances, we'd all go, oh, well, good, he has a head start. Not in the Gospel of Luke. If you've read the Gospel, this is chapter 19 we just deal with. If you've read the prior 18 chapters, you're going, oops, that's not good. Luke does not think rich people have a fighting chance. Okay, it starts at the very beginning, even before Jesus is born. You remember Mary finds out she's going to bear the Son of God, and she breaks into song, and part of that song is, the hungry you have sent empty away. You know, not good news for the rich. The rich you have sent empty away. Not good. And then you go on through, and uh, if you're reading, you know, if you think of it as the Sermon on the Mount, that's Matthew's version. Matthew's version is the Sermon on the Mount. When Luke tells us about that sermon, he puts it on a flat plane. This is the Sermon on the Plain. And he uses some of the same words, but he changes some of them. So that when Jesus is preaching the Sermon on the Plain, first of all, there are the Beatitudes. You remember, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Mm, and not if you're reading Luke. Blessed are you who are poor, not poor in spirit, poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Luke is not messing around. He's not trying to put this in the spiritual world. He's putting this in the down and dirty world. And then Luke adds something that Matthew doesn't have, because Luke adds a series of curses. And number one on the curse list, Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Oh, now that's no fun, is it? Now, of course, you have to begin to decide what does rich mean? Because in Jesus' day, rich meant that you could count on two meals a day and you might make it to age 60. So that if we're talking about middle class America where we can count three meals a day and a place to sleep and the possibility of a vacation and maybe retirement, that would be wealth untold in Luke and Jesus' day. And so if you and I read the Gospel of Luke, after a while we begin to twitch slightly, like last week. Did you listen to the parable? The rich man and Lazarus? You remember that? The rich man and Lazarus, and the rich man ate sumptuously, and Lazarus was laying, lying at the gate, wait, waiting to even eat the crumbs if he could. And when he died, the poor man went to be with Abraham. And you remember where the rich man went? Hades, where he was in torment. And by this time, you and I are beginning to think, oh, I have a whole garage full of stuff that I never use, and I'm not sure why I'm keeping it. And just in case you missed the point, Luke also tells the story of the rich and the young ruler. Remember the rich young ruler? Hi, Jesus, I'd like to follow you. Good, go sell everything you have and follow me. And Luke is specific. He said the young man turned away sad because he had many possessions. Oh. And at this point, you and I are going, oh, rats. 
So anybody reading the Zacchaeus story is alerted to this. They've now read 18 chapters. They know what Luke thinks about rich people by now. And so here is Zacchaeus. He's a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And if you're reading along, you go, this guy hasn't got a chance. There's no way. There's no hope for this fellow. I wonder what Jesus is going to do to him. Now, yep, Zacchaeus was short, evidently. And he climbs a sycamore tree. And that means throwing any dignity you have as chief tax collector to win. All right. I don't mean to be a delicate or anything, but wearing underwear wasn't invented until about the 15th or 16th century. <laughs> <laughs> and you think about the robes that men wore in the Middle East. And Zacchaeus is climbing a tree. There, some of you don't. It? I bet you never think of the Zacchaeus story the same way. <laughs> he has now thrown dignity to the wind. He is so eager to see Jesus. It does bring a whole new light. Because here's Jesus. Zacchaeus, get out from there. <laughs> Now, if you read, you know, Bible studies, maybe you have a really good Bible study book, and it would list the miracle stories of Jesus. Maybe it might even list the miracle sayings of Jesus after the rich young ruler turned away. You remember that? Because Jesus looked after him and shook his head and said, Oh, it is so hard for the rich to be saved. It's easier for a camel to be threaded through the eye of a needle than it is for the rich to be saved. And Peter was so surprised. Lord, if the rich can't be saved, who can be? And Jesus said, well, with God, anything is possible. Amen. And you see, the story of Zacchaeus is not listed as one of Jesus' miracle stories. But if you're paying attention did you listen to what Jesus says? Zacchaeus comes down and he is so excited. The scripture actually, it says, in our translation it says, and he was glad to welcome him. That word is not strong enough. What Zacchaeus did was rejoice. He rejoiced to welcome Jesus into his home. And he said, I will give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've defrauded, if he's defrauded anybody, you can count on it, friends. He's defrauded somebody in this little process. If I've defrauded anybody, I'm going to pay them back four times over. And Jesus announces, salvation has come to this house. If you're watching closely, friends, the camel has just been threaded through the eye of an eagle. This is a rich man who has been saved. What a miracle. And see, we've given that little story to the children to play with. This is one of Jesus' miracle stories. And the interesting thing is that if you were paying attention last week, you got to see it. <coughs> last week, we filled out estimate of giving cards. Now, by the way, if you did not get a chance to fill out an estimate of giving cards, there are some out before you. But this was our way of saying we are going to invest in God's future through this church. And it's good news. Let me tell you, in 2015 on our first Sunday, there were 65 cards filled out. And that total was $240,000 at rest pay just on that first Sunday. Amen. And then you kept sending cards in. You'd mail them in. You'd drop them in the offering plate. You'd hand them to the staff or something like that. And you kept bringing those. And they got bigger and bigger. But that was just the first Sunday last year. The first Sunday this year was 69 cards. That means there are four more families who have stepped up to estimating than did last year. And the total was 284,000, which is a huge increase. That's just on the first Sunday. Friends, if you weren't paying attention last Sunday, the camel got threaded through the eye of the needle. Salvation has come to this house. Okay, so we're only doing 
Yeah, we'll grow. We can do better than that. You remember Jesus told the rich young ruler, sell everything that you have and follow me. Zacchaeus says, I'll sell half of what I have and give to the poor. Okay, half is good. 10% is good too. Because when rich people start giving stuff away, then salvation has visited the house. The eye of the needle has been threaded with a camel of all things. You are a miracle story of Jesus. You are Zacchaeus. And salvation has come to this house. Thanks be to God. If the rich can't be saved, who can be? Well, as it turns out, in God, all things are possible. Thank you for threading the eye of the needle with a camel. Thank you for being Zacchaeus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.